What's up guys? The day is here. It's time to summon for Rimuru and plus 15 his skills and build him. So let's start it off here. Beautiful login screen that we have. Let's go in the game and there is actually a gift code. It's on the screen now. You can actually get 10 leaves and a million gold. You just have a few days to redeem it. So hurry up. Okay, so let's just close that. Man, animations... They are on point, it fits with the anime, even his skill set, that's the really cool uh, thing about it. So we also have a Shuna as well, so you have to log in on the seventh day, you actually get her, you get her artifact on day number six, and you can also do the uh, side story to get her faster. So I'm gonna try to do that and showcase her for you guys. So let's begin with the Rumaru uh, summons. This is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going for triple S. I think I have enough bookmarks for that. So, oh my god, L let's see how long it actually takes to make it happen. We got 7 day login, as you can see here. Artifact, day 6. Uh, Shuna on day number 7. A bunch of other stuff before. Very nice, very nice. And to redeem the gift code, if you're wondering, right, you go in advance. So you do, like, you swipe right there and you event news. And then you press coupon at the top right and then you enter the gift code right here and then you press okay of course okay let's start it off with the summons come on man what is up with the with the lag let's go in there and the first thing is that do i even have the skill ups from what i remember i've been saving so let's i do have the skill ups baby i do have the skill ups i've been saving for a long time i guess it's been a while since uh since I made a showcase on this account. Okay, let's go, Rimaru. Oh baby, triple S. Look at the covenant bookmarks. Been saving. This is like for over a year. Probably like a year and a half of saving, guys. So I'm just gonna like summon, summon, summon. We're just gonna be skipping as much as possible. Am I gonna get the artifact at least once? There we go, okay. Is it the artifact? We don't know, it could be another one. So it's a limited artifact, of course, and uh, Unseen Observer. Well, I didn't have that one. Don't really need it for this account. What is this? What is this? Surprise, surprise. And, okay, it's time matter. What is this? It's okay, it's okay. It's powder. It's, it's not powder. I'm going to use it. I'm going to put it to good use one day. PV, PvP, we'll see. So, Rimaru, my thoughts about this hero. Of course, uh, I messed up in my video and I said that he steals the buffs of the enemy. Uh, like two buffs, but no, he copies the buffs, which makes sense because, you know, in, in the anime, in the manga, that's what he does. He copies. Uh, so, yeah, uh, not as powerful. Stealing would be, of course, more powerful, but still, copying uh, two buffs, very strong stuff right there. And uh, I believe that it happens no matter what. Uh, that, that's the really cool thing about it. And, uh, oh my god, here we go. Uh, that was, what, like halfway or like 80 summons? So we got the first copy. And uh, what was his memory imprint, though? I'm like, yo, let's go triple S, baby. I don't even know his memory imprint. I forgot what it was. Let's just, uh, I'm just not gonna say anything. Let's just look at it. Effect resistance for the team. Uh, works for, for my playstyle. Attack for himself. To be honest, I don't know about his damage, because uh, he deals fixed damage, which means it should not be affected by crit and crit damage. So I think bulky on counter set, because the random buffs here. Yeah, um, that's the thing. Okay, another thing about this hero is that if you get attacked on your team by a buffed up hero, so the enemy attacks you, they have a buff, Rimaru will get 30% combat, as he's going to be able to cut between the enemy's combo and go and that's very good because uh you go in between and then you're able to copy um you know up to two buffs if they do have uh, two two buffs that oh my god okay the target that you're uh you're aiming at right with the skill number three and uh those buffs that you still could be some like oh nice we got it could be a defense buff it could be i mean you probably have immunity on your team already right uh, but let's say they removed your immunity and then like you, you steal the immunity again or something like that um, So you put it back on your team. It's gonna be very interesting uh, So here with this artifact you can use that on various warriors, right? It's at the start of the turn and these buffs are very strong 
uh, yeah, I mean, crit damage buff, attack buff, immunity, defense speed, all these buffs are very good. But chasing for an, a limited artifact is definitely a rough, it's a rough time, right? You can get one for one power, uh, one time from the Power of Knowledge shop, but that's it, right? So definitely not recommended unless you know for sure, 100% you need this thing. But what you can do is pull for like one extra copy so you could have like two of them. And then you just use nice. You just use the bottle of knowledge to limit break the artifact uh, further. So we got two, very cool. But I feel like this is gonna be a solid artifact because it happens at the start of the turn, which means that you could just delay your skill three on a warrior, right? Until you get the attack buff, until you get the critical hit damage buff, right? And then you just go ham. So there's gonna be different ways to go about it with uh, with that artifact, but it's gonna be interesting. Uh, definitely going to be interesting. And uh, there's a lot of uh, very powerful warriors as well. So uh, yeah, does it justify uh, wearing it over like a sacred side, let's say? It depends, it depends on the warrior, of course. But uh, of course, I will be using it on Rimuru to uh, see if uh, it works well on him. <clears throat> the good thing about the buffs is that the more buffs that you have, it's okay. The more buffs, those, that's gonna be a pity for this one here, unless I actually managed to pull him just before, because he's the first one. I, I, I didn't even pity that, I think. Unless I'm wrong. I think it was before, it was before. So yeah, more buffs on your team means more fixed damage that you're going to do with the skill number three. Now, I don't know the multipliers, we'll test it out. Um, you know, it starts at 5,000, goes up to 10,000 fixed damage. This is pure damage, unaffected by damage mitigation from your defense and unaffected by your critical uh, hit chance, and your critical hit damage, of course, unaffected by your attack unless i'm wrong right but i think they're going with the fixed damage which is yeah five thousand all the way up to ten thousand and i think it's gonna i i, I don't oh nice i don't know if it's gonna be like slices of a thousand uh which kind of makes sense five buffs ten thousand or it could be like 500 each we'll see we'll see but yeah other thoughts about this hero having him on a counter set definitely uh very good because you know the skill one provides him with a random buff and these random buffs are dangerous uh i mean not dangerous but i mean what's really good about them is that it boosts his survivability like getting something like anti-critical hit chance buff um is a big deal be because that's 50 percent chance that the enemy will uh not land a critical hit on you and when the enemy has 300 percent 350 percent uh, critical hit damage, uh, not landing a crit is, uh, it's major. It's major survivability increase right there. So, yeah. Now, okay, um, that, that was not a pity again, I think. It's looking good, boys. It's looking good. I don't recommend, uh, people to do something like this even before the hero got tested, but you can see the random buffs, right? You got immunity, uh, attack buff, Critical hit resistance and effect resistance buff. All these are great for survivability beside the attack buff. The immunity, yeah, I mean, not really. But then what if they took out your immunity? Let's, right, like a Cerise removed it. And then, nice artifact there. And then you put it up again on yourself before they try to land a bunch of debuffs on you. Even the effect resistance buff, that's pretty strong right there. What is it, like 50%? Uh, 50 or 60, 50% 50 I think, effect resistance increase. So if you already have some on him, and let's say you have like 50, right? And then you get an additional 50, then wow, look at this pull right there. That is juicy as hell. That is so good. So you go from 50 effect resistance to 100 uh, because of that buff. And uh, yeah, you're gonna be able to resist a bunch of like debuffs uh, from the enemy if they don't have a bunch of effectiveness. So yeah, it's strong, right? Uh, by the way, guys, the, the passive, the skill to, uh, the thing that when he steals, uh, not steals, sorry, when he copies up to two buffs and grants those buffs to your whole team, that can only trigger from his skill number three. It's when it's not a basic skill, a basic skill, skill number one. 
I don't even know how many I have, guys. Uh, I think I, I have to go check it out on the next next one that I get. Uh, uh, how many bookmarks do I even have left? I don't even know. Okay, we're down like 1,500. And I got something like four copies. So that's better than, you know, nice. That's better than 605, you know, the pity every time. So this is looking good here. This is looking real good compared to my usual odds. Uh, five. Five already. Three mask, but then what if I have some here? What if I have some here? Okay, we, I didn't have much space. There is none. I can buy one for Pot of Knowledge, but I have five of him. And six is what you need for Triple S, I believe. That's what it is, isn't it? Ain't it? Okay, we, we don't have space here. So I'm going to leave it full, actually. Just to make sure it's one plus six to Triple S. So yeah, uh, one plus five. So you need six total if you want triple S. Let's go back in there. So yes, the uh, mask. One more copy of him and the mask I can use powder. Uh, yeah, not a hundred percent chance. Maybe if I don't pull more, but it's it's still pretty dang good. L let's continue. I have quite a few covenant bookmarks left, so it's not too bad. So he's Earth Element. Um, that's not bad. That's not bad. I like the fact that when you copy the buffs, it's uh, it doesn't matter if you like if you miss your attack. And well, the tooltip says that you need to land your attack, doesn't it? But I think you don't need effectiveness to actually copy the buff. That's what it is. That's what it is. And that's definitely great. Nice. Okay, here we go. We got him. We got him, boys. You can see here, after attacking with a non-basic skill, copies two buffs when the target is buffed. Regardless of whether the attack hits, okay, and grants their effects to all allies. So you don't need effectiveness to copy. And... It doesn't need to hit. It could be a miss. So you could be going on a fire hero, an evasion based hero, doesn't matter. Fire evasion hero, like the whole shebang. Okay, very nice, very nice. But it doesn't work against undispellable buffs. Of course, that would be ridiculously strong. So I think I'm gonna stop there. That is a triple S, baby. That is a triple S. Let's do it up. Okay, let's. Let's grab him. So that was almost 2,000 Covenant bookmarks. God, it takes so long to save all that. Takes so long. Six copies. Triple S. And... Yeah, three mask. It's okay. What is it gonna be at? 75 plus 85 percent. Plus if I get an extra one. But if I buy one from Powder of Knowledge Shop, which I will do. Actually, I will do it now. You have to keep them separate, guys. You don't want to limit break all into one. Because you might want to use that thing on more than, uh, you know, than one hero. And you know what? The Bottle of Knowledge. I can actually buy that. So I should have bought more of that from rotations before. It's too hard to manage the five accounts, guys. Like, it... It takes so long. Just think about how much time it takes for you to play one. I'm playing five. Okay, let's do it. So, very easy. We power him up. And we got the promotion. Uh, th this is the feeling that Wells get when they actually do this. You know, I don't get this feeling often because I rarely do things like that. But... I'm able to save a lot because I don't build the same heroes across all five accounts. Sometimes I do when the hero is like overpowered. But it needs to be tested first. That's the thing. So I think the effect resistance for the team is going to be way better than the attack for himself. Because I don't think boosting his attack is going to work out too well. 
because he's dealing fixed damage. I could be wrong, his multipliers could be great. Maybe the fixed damage is one part of it, and then there's also the damage that he does on top of it, uh, right? Like, the fixed damage is goes on top of the, the, the damage that he normally does. Could be wrong, needs to be tested. A lot of stuff needs to be tested. So let's, uh, let's do the skill ups, right? I do, yes, I do have the catalyst. That is good. And here, what about the skill ups? What is important? Well, cycling this skill number three is a big deal because it activates the uh, team wide buff copy. Like you, you copy up to two buffs, grant those to your team. That is big. That is very big. So yes, you definitely want this thing at plus three. So ju just three Mola, not bad. The damage increase, well, that's the thing. If it's fixed damage, what about the damage increase? Is it gonna affect the fixed damage? Usually not. So I think it, it might go on top of his usual damage. That means that's gonna hurt, man. Yo, that's gonna hurt so bad. Okay. So, also, when he cuts, he attacks. So that's why, of course, the, the damage skill ups here. So overall, he could be a pretty solid damage dealer. Especially if he gets like a self attack buff from his artifact, if he gets critical hit damage, you already have attack buff or something like that. So for the skill ups, if I if I had to go in order, I think the most important, since we just have damage on skill one, plus three here, and then hmm, if you want big damage on this, maybe max it out. But usually I go like plus three, plus three. And then like plus three because it's one Molagora each, right? Especially if he's on a counter set. And then you max like skill three, then you max skill two and you max skill one. Th that's how I would do it. So if you're short on Mola and uh, you really like what you're seeing, what you're hearing about this hero, then uh, yeah, go ahead. You'll be getting more Mola over time. It's just, it's, it's a rough time, man. If you're trying to build so many different toys and we're getting a lot of toys. That's the thing. So plus 15 here, so we have four of his artifact. I'm locking two because I want to potentially use that on two different heroes. Now I will limit break one and we'll just use the bottle. Let, let's even, you know, I feel like it's going to be pretty good because you get it at the start of the turn, which means it's, it's going to affect your decision about what skill you're about to use, which target, you're about to attack. It will be a deciding factor for sure. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's bring that up to 24. This is my build for Remuru. Things I like and don't like about this build. The good thing is that it's on counter set and immunity on his own artifact. That is all good. Now the things I don't like. I feel like I have too much attack on him. I definitely want more health. The defense is at a good place. I might have too much speed. I'll explain why. And then I, I definitely want more effectiveness. Now in RT, you do get the frenzy effectiveness buff throughout the battle. So it's not that big of a deal to get more effectiveness. But I feel like I'd be more comfortable with a bit more of it. Now, here are my, my issues with uh, this particular build. The first thing is that, yes, more effectiveness would be nice because if the target that you attack is buff, you know, you got the team-wide defense break against the enemy team for two turns unaffected by elemental disadvantage, right? So that's good right here, but you need more effectiveness to make that thing more reliable. Uh, now, another thing is that he has soul burn that reduces the cooldown by two turns. It's already a four turn cooldown, so he's going to be able to cycle that skill three often, and that is going to be staple in uh, his hit, right? So you definitely want to, you know, have the, the effectiveness. So, so you have more chances to land the defense break. So there is that, right? And then the fact that I have a decent amount of speed, I guess, on him, considering he's on counter immunity with that much attack, let's say. The thing is, he gets 30% combativeness push when the, uh, you know, when the ally that gets attacked on your team by a buffed enemy, uh, he triggers that thing here and he gets 30% combativeness increase. So if he cuts, right, if he cuts too early on, and the enemy still has their immunity buff, then, well, you don't have a hero that actually takes out their immunity, then you will not be able to apply that defense break. So that's another thing that uh, is sort of like troubling me. 
Now his gear that I have on him is actually uh, pretty good. The stats are, are pretty good. It's just I would fix it with more health you know, uh, like maybe 17,000 health. I feel more comfortable with something like that. More effectiveness. I mean, like like 40% maybe, or start with that and see how it goes. So I would drop the attack. I would drop maybe some of the speed to make that happen. But these are the sort of like tweaks I would do uh, for this hero. And I have him on attack percentage main stats on the boots and on the ring. So I would definitely have one of those on health percentage. And if I did that, I think he'd be maybe at... 18,000 health when I was shuffling gear that was about how much health he would have so yeah I would definitely feel more comfortable I feel like um we'll see the damage that's the thing the main purpose of this build right here is to have a uh, quite a bit of offensive power so I can really see how hard he actually hits you know when he uh, counters with the skill one when he used the attack you know uh, with the the passive here the you know the be ready and then let's see devour uh, devour it a uh, black flame is it only 5000 to 10000 damage or this is on top of the damage he would do based on his attack and crit damage and the mul multiplier of this skill and this is only on a turn two turn cooldown two turn cooldown when you have uh, the soul so that's definitely going to be a big deal can't wait to test him out but i have him on his self imprint for more attack for himself but yeah let us know what you guys think about all that how did you build your rimuru how should i change this build so uh, i could uh, put him to better use let us know about all that let us know about your luck in the comment section but that's gonna be it for this one i'm actually nice good luck with all you do peace out for now